Hey guys, we're starting a new series, the Wake Up Radio Clock. I designed this and built it a while ago and I'm using it ever since. This thing is awesome, it has all the functions you may need in a radio alarm clock and uh, if you're missing something you can easily implement new functions yourself because this thing is completely open source, uh, both hardware and software. Uh, you're gonna find links in the description for everything, the schematics of the hardware, Gerber files, all the software for the microcontroller, the files for the 3D printed parts and also there's a PC application I wrote to add your own channels. Uh, watch the whole series, I'm gonna get into details and explain how I built it, how everything works. So uh, if you needed a reason to stop buying stuff and start building something yourself, uh, this whole series is gonna show you how to do it. And uh, no money in the world can buy the feeling you'll get when you complete a project like this. Good news is uh, I'm doing another giveaway. You can win one of the five copies of the PCB. All you have to do is make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and uh, leave a comment. Tell me which one of the projects I uploaded so far you enjoyed the most. I'm gonna pick the winners at the end of the series and uh, they're gonna get a message from me. I wanna say thank you guys for all the support, for being a part of this channel. It really inspires me to be better and uh, it really means a lot. So thank you all, enjoy this series and with that being said, let's do this. When I started to design this radio clock, uh, I wanted to make something that looks good and also has a lot of useful functions. So there are some very nice features I implemented in this design, starting with the display, which is a 20 by 4 dot matrix LCD, but it has the look of a 7 segment LED display. So the clock's digits are much bigger as if I would have used uh, single characters like this display normally uses. I did this by defining my own custom characters and then I used these custom characters to create my own digits. I'm going to show you exactly how it's done when we get to the software part. Much of this information I'm giving you can be used uh, in every kind of project, uh, so bear with me. And uh, if I forget something, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. The RTC, the real-time clock, is implemented by using a dedicated chip. I also have a battery backup, so in case the power goes out, uh, it won't lose the time and date. The clock keeps running and uh, you're not going to have to reprogram everything when the power comes back on. I also have dual temperature sensors so I can see the temperature both inside and outside my home. Um, the radio module I used is a wideband FM digital receiver and uh, to set any new radio stations I wrote a PC application so I'm using my laptop to connect via UART with the radio clock and uh, I'm going to show you this whole process of adding new radio stations too. There are two speakers on the sides, 8 ohm speakers. Uh, the audio coming out from the radio module is amplified first. This is the volume control knob and uh, some control buttons, including a snooze button. There are a lot of 3D printed parts in this project. I've printed even the knob for this volume potentiometer. Uh, this was one of my first 3D modeling projects. It was more than five years ago. And uh, some things I would do differently today, but uh, that doesn't mean that I don't like this design. Maybe it's subjective, but I still love it after all this time. There's gonna be a dedicated part of this series for the 3D modeling, just like I did for the LC meter series. And by the way, you can check the playlist of that series if you wanna learn how to build your own LC meter. Every time I start a new design, the first thing I do is drawing the block schematic because it's always so helpful to understand the basic principle and to keep track of any changes. So in this case, the block schematic looks like this. We're gonna start right here in the center. We have our microcontroller. It's an 8-bit AVR running at 5 volts. Uh, the radio module, which runs at 3.3 volts. And we're gonna use I2C protocol to communicate between these two devices. And since they're running at different voltages, we're gonna place a level translator between them. And I'm going to show you how this level translator works in a moment. We're going to want to amplify the audio output of this module. And uh, from here, we're going to go to our speakers. Uh, we're also going to use I2C to speak with the RTC, the real time clock. But since we're running the RTC at 5 volts, we don't need a level translator. We have a backup battery for the clock here. 
and then we have two temperature sensors one is going to be on board and for the second one we're going to use a cable so I can place this second sensor outside and uh, I can measure the temperature both inside and outside my room uh, these sensors will communicate with our microcontroller using one wire protocol next we have our LCD a buzzer and an alarm LED uh, we have a bunch of control keys and then we want to use the hardware UART of this microcontroller to communicate with the outside world uh, in this case it's going to be a PC application I wrote in C -sharp. Uh, I'm using this application to input or to read the frequencies of my radio stations but this can be used for other purposes too let's say if you want to log the temperature readings and save them on your computer or uh, use a relay to turn on the lights when the alarm starts or any other thing you may want to add to this project that's the beauty of open source projects so it's a pretty straightforward block schematic um, I didn't draw the power source we're gonna need uh, two different voltages 5 and 3.3 volts and in terms of current draw I never measured it uh, the highest current draw we're gonna have here the audio amplifier I would guess it's somewhere between 500 and 800 milliamps it depends a lot on what speakers you're gonna use everything else on board is gonna be less than 50 milliamps so I guess 5 volts 1 amp and for the 3.3 volt rails I think uh, it's less than 20 milliamps that we need that's gonna be our power source I'm gonna have to check with the data sheet for this module but uh, I guess it's less than 20 milliamps that's basically what the whole hardware should look like <laughs>